Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Jeff Teague in Raleigh, North Carolina, and this is Auto Jeff Reviews. And this is the 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. It's in Kodiak Brown with the Outer Banks package. Auto Jeff Reviews, this is where we do thorough, very detailed reviews, but we have fun doing it. You're gonna see a lot of pop culture references, and we're gonna strike first, strike hard, with no mercy. One of the things I like to do in my videos is walk around the car before I start breaking it apart section by section because if we're at an auto show, we want the turntable to keep going around and around. You spin me right round, baby, right round, like a record, baby, right round, right round. All right, 2021, we've got our choice of Bronco Sport or the Bronco. And then we've also got our choice here Really cool names for trim levels. We're not seeing things like XLE or Limited or Platinum. What we're seeing is Big Bend and Outer Banks like you see here and Badlands and First Edition. That's how you differentiate a Bronco Sport. So now that we've got a lay of the land, we gotta learn more. Hey, how about this white lettering here? Very cool, very trendy, very hipster, very rugged, very cool. Anyway, we're gonna talk about engine performance because it's important to know how it's going to accelerate, how it's gonna feel for ride comfort, and when you're having to navigate those treacherous obstacles and that rough terrain, right? This is a 1.5 liter EcoBoost turbocharged engine, okay? If you wanna go up to the Badlands or the first edition, which are next in the hierarchy of Bronco Sports, you'll get a 2.0 liter. This one right here delivers 181 horsepower and 190 foot-pounds of torque. It's matched with an eight-speed automatic transmission. We're still on the 1.5 here, but if you did upgrade to the 2.0 liter EcoBoost, then you'll get 250 horsepower and 277 pounds of torque. So there is a big kick a big jump up if you did upgrade to the next trim level. Of course, that comes with another higher price tag as well. The one thing that I observed in this vehicle when I opened up the hood, this is one of the lightest hoods I've ever seen. I'm gonna have to give this a Doug score. But right here, you don't have to worry about it dropping and really hurting things. Yes, it's a hood, it's got some weight, but it's so light. Here's a look at the guts here. This is matched with an eight-speed automatic transmission, like I said. You can also upgrade to paddle shifters if you get the Badlands and First Edition to give you a more involved ride, we'll call it. It's a nice looking front end, isn't it? I actually thought that these contours here could affect visibility for shorter drivers, but I had other people sit in the driver's seat just to see what it was like, and that is a non-factor. It really doesn't affect how you would see over the Hood, I don't think at all. Of course, you have this black grille with white lettering, and then we've got a series of LED lighting, right? We've got LED accent lights, we've got LED headlights, and then we've got high intensity LED fog lights, and I'll turn those on so you can see. And the benefit here to this series of LED lights is that you can see farther and wider, and it can project higher up into the trees if you're in the country or at the park like I am now. This is another distinction between the Outer Banks package and the higher levels like a Badlands, is the ground clearance here is fine. It's 7.9 inches. However, if you need more than that, because you're really gonna need to clear those stumps and that brush and sticks and rocks and things like that, you'll go to the Badlands edition, which has, it went from 7.9 to 8.8 .8 inch ground clearance as well. And then you'll see a series of safety features that are designed to help I like the Bliss package. It's blind spot monitor or blind spot monitoring system. And then it's also got the um, collision avoidance. It's got smart braking. It's got automatic high beams, radar operated cruise control, and then lane departure warning system. But it's also got lane keep assist. So if the lines are visible, it will keep you centered in your lane on the highway. I tried it even around curves and it works real well. And then after, I guess, several seconds, like it seemed to me like eight to 10 seconds, it tells you to keep your hands on the steering wheel. Not that I tried that, but it's kind of like a second set of hands saying, hey, stop being distracted. We're not keeping you in this lane center forever. Hold the steering wheel, dude. Bronco Sport has an intelligent four-wheel drive system where on dry roads, it's gonna be 
front wheel drive. However, when you lose some traction and you get some wheel slippage, I was driving on this gravelly dirt road a while back and you could see that it was sending power to the back wheels as well. So that gave me comfort and peace of mind that the car was doing what it was supposed to be doing and I'm getting optimal traction. That would especially help you out in snow and mud and sand and things like that. Speaking of that, we've got goat modes and you'll see that inside. It's sort of a multiple terrain selection system. It goes on any type of terrain. We've got five different settings. We've got normal, which is normal. We've got eco for better gas mileage. Then we've got sport mode for better acceleration. We've got slippery mode, which is ideal for snow and heavy rains and things like that. And then you've got sand mode, which would be ideal for, well, the beach or loose sand on a road similar to what we're on now. And the best part is on the display, really cool graphics that keep you entertained while you're selecting the modes yourself. You choose. One thing I think that's really cool is people are gonna know what you're driving, right? They're gonna know your ride. What do you drive? I drive Outer Banks, because it says it right here. And then if you get the upgraded Outer Banks package, you're gonna get power moonroof, a wireless charging pad inside so you can charge without wires. Pretty self-explanatory. A 10 speaker B&O, Bang & Olufsen sound system with subwoofer, and then HD radio. Outer Banks upgrade, baby. We'll see up top here a safari type roof rack. It would be ideal for loading different things for outdoor adventuring like your kayaks and coolers and extra luggage and things like that that you might need. Stack them up top if you don't have enough room back here. Then the fuel mileage, it's one of those easy open doors. It's also a no cap. No caps here. Do we serve caps? No caps here. The fuel mileage is gonna be 25 in the city, 28 on the highway, combined of 26 and on my one week evaluation I'm averaging just under 26 combined about 25.5 or 25.6 I forget which point one that is right now but I've also been driving it kind of heavy I've been driving it with a little bit of more of a heavy accelerator pedal if you're an average conservative driver you might get better than what I got I'm still happy with the results let's look at the tires these are Michelin tires and they're rated at 225 60R18, so 18 inch alloy wheels here, and it's gonna be a two color design. It's sort of a gloss, almost like the color of a piece of charcoal. You know how you try to tell people it's black, it's dark gray. We'll just call it charcoal. That's what we see here. We've got the Bronco insignia all over the wheels. In fact, there are lots of Easter eggs around here, so you know that you're driving in something from the Bronco family. And of course, we've got the metallic silver accent as well. Very nice looking tires, and they kind of complement this well. By the way, what do you guys think of the Kodiak brown color? I found several interesting things in the back part of the car. The first one has to do with the words Bronco and Sport because during my week evaluation, I got to show it off to several of my family members and friends, and People were a little bit confused. They thought that this was the Bronco, the bigger size, not the mini-me, the mini-me, okay? Who does number two work for? All right, so they said, wow, it's a lot smaller than I thought, or the, one person said, I'm disappointed the Bronco is a lot smaller than I expected. Well, it's because it's the Bronco Sport. So if you want the larger size Bronco, you can get on a waiting list, you can order it, then you'll get the ideal vehicle for you that you had in mind. This is the Bronco Sport, it's going to be smaller, but it's surprisingly spacious for what you might do with your family for road trips and beach. And I'll show you that in just a second, but we'll see it's got parking sonar in the back. It's rated with an approved tow hitch of 2,000 pounds. It goes up to 2,200 if you go up to the Badlands Edition. Now, I thought this was kind of cool. We can open up the door right here, or if I just want to open up the glass, pop, pop, pop that thing, we can load our gear or groceries. So if I'm coming out of Kroger or Harris Teeter, where I'm from, anything like that, just load your stuff in, okay? Real simple. Profile view, this is a really cool looking SUV. I almost call it a truck. We'll call it a small SUV truck. It rides very much like you'd expect a sport utility vehicle truck-like version to be. One thing I like about it, it's got smart key, Pretty cool looking key. I like to show that off as well. Bronco, I went to Western Michigan. Go Broncos, go Broncos. All right, it's got smart key. So if I wanna unlock the doors, 
have the key in my pocket, my purse, lock it just like that, real easy. And then it does have blind spot monitor, blind spot information system right here. And it shows up amber yellow color, orangish yellow color, right in the mirror. And I love that system. It's nice and bright, it's high intensity, so you can see people coming up from your sides. And it's that second opinion before you merge left or right, safety first. But first, let me take a selfie. I've actually been waiting to review this one for quite some time, so when I found out I had the opportunity, it's very exciting. I'm so excited and I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control and I think I like it. Cargo capacity is actually very nice. Namaste. All right, in the back here you've got either 32.4 or 32.5 cubic feet of space, depending on if you have a roof or not, and it's rubber lined so that you could probably just wash it out, you can clean it out, real easy to do if you get a muddy or dirty. And then if I put these down, I've got a nice flat surface. It's small for sleeping, but I mean, you could do it if you had to. You can just prop things up here, pillow blanket. In a pinch, you could do this. Then it opens up to 65.2 cubic feet of storage space, and it's tall. It's boxy, boxy but good. And then you can stack things up. It's great for moving people. It's also great for a two-person road trip. Put all your gear in here, or you can add a little bit of extra room. And what I'm do, gonna do here is I'm gonna take this out so you can see the spare tire and all that jazz, all that jazz. And then if I wanna put this down into the groove here, then I maximize my optimal storage space here. So you can have a flat surface if it's on the top groove or a little bit more space. You make the call. And see, it was easy to do. Some more features as we look around, of course you can see. I love those brown seats. That's brown leather seating and it goes well with the black. I'm not usually a fan of brown interior, but I do like it in this case. It looks like, frankly, it looks like how it should look. You've got hooks here so you can let them hang. You got lights little storage pocket for however you would use it. Again, a tall, tall area, which may be optimal for moving things. I already made a video and I'll put that at the end of this video where I saw what we could fit in here. And what I found is it was pretty shocking. You could fit two tall suitcases in here. I got those in there. Two medium size suitcases in here, and then two, we'll call them carry-on suitcases as well that you might put on an airplane or maybe a toiletry bag or something like that. And then you can put a couple other bags. I also found out you could fit golf clubs in here. You could also fit mountain bikes. And we got Chewbacca. Did not have Chewbacca's approval. But a Wookiee, maybe. I've been on this back part for a long time, but hey, I like big butts and I cannot lie. Those other brothers can't deny. The thing I can't deny is look at this use of space. A bottle opener. <laughs> Crack open your favorite bottle right here, baby. This is pretty impressive and it's out of the way. You don't even have to think about it. And how many times, maybe what, two or three times a year you need a bottle opener? You got it right here in your SUV. Remember how there's a little light here? Have you ever had the hatch open, the lift gate, and you needed lights? Boom. Look at this. Got two floodlights up there. That's really cool. LED style, baby. And then look, they're adjustable as well. How handy would that be at nighttime? You're camping, you need to find something, you need to interrogate somebody, you're like, wow pretty bright in here, isn't it? You want to tell me everything? I do. So see the benefits there? Just like that. Go with the arrows, Jeff. Go with the arrows. Can you see that? Forward and backward, not sideways. And then we've got two thick, durable handles. Or you can just do that. For those of you who don't know, I spent most of my life growing up in Michigan in 
suburbs of Detroit area. So I'm a big fan of Ford Motor Company. I've had family members work there. My dad worked there. My uncle worked there. I've got a lot of loyalty to them and it makes me very happy to see the styling of this, to see it return, and to see the ride comfort. And I love the interior. It works. It fits. It's kind of cool. We've got the doors open now so we can see inside. This is called the butterfly effect for those of you who've spent any time in the car industry. Look at this attention to detail here. Sort of a metallic brown. Nice soft features here. Pocket for a small bottle. I'll show you one that would not work too. And then look here. I'm a big fan when one color does not dominate the interior. And here we've got several different shadings, several different styles but it breaks things up, it keeps it fresh. How about this? When have you seen this, folks? Zippered pockets. And it goes in pretty, pretty deep there. Imagine the things that you could hide in there if you don't want them to be seen. And it's also got the mole, 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 mole system here to put on accessories. You can affix things and keep them locked in there so they're not going to move and you can add like i said accessories or options to that as well tall tall space tall passengers anyone yeah ride comfort and then down here we've got ac power 110 volt 150 watt grounded outlet rear temperature controls not rear temperature controls rear vents we've got ac power 110 volt 150 watt grounded outlet. Imagine the things that kids in the back could plug in while they're on a road trip. Rear vents. And then let's look here so we can see. I'm digging this interior here. Nice tall windows. For what it is, really good visibility as well. I know that's something people look for. Then look at this. Obviously, we have a raised touch screen. Believe it or not, it's really easy to use. It's user friendly. For those of you who are a little bit skeptical or nervous, or we don't want to say afraid, but afraid of new technology because it's overwhelming. There's so much of it and it changes so fast. This is very user friendly. This multimedia touch screen, it's easy to figure out. And as you're looking at this, my observation, we know that Ford, a lot of times in the past, They've overwhelmed us with too many buttons. I don't feel overwhelmed with this at all. It feels sort of like the right balance of, it gives me everything I need without being too much. For all you reviewers out there, you know how difficult it is to show leg room and head room and shoulder room with one camera angle. I'm gonna to attempt to do it here. I think I got a good balance. Now, of course you can adjust your seats forward and backward and things like that. This is set for me and I'm five foot eight. This is also set for me and I'm five foot eight. I have plenty of leg room. I can even stretch out underneath the driver's seat if I wanna just kinda of really stretch, you know? And then my headroom, it's incredible. So I imagine somebody who's above six foot would be just fine. The seats are very soft, very plush, shockingly comfortable. My backseat passengers this week also said that. This is a little bit harder, but it's not like a rock. It's firm, it gives you support. I feel like I'm describing mattresses. And then here, we've got this. I'm gonna put the seat back because I'm also showing you that it has a power passenger seat, baby. Okay, so here's one of the limitations is that if you have somebody really tall, look at this. So that might be something you wanna think about too. Tall front seat passengers, limited leg room in the back, but again, it's not bad. This is extreme all the way back, and that doesn't happen that often. And besides, you gotta have a courteous front seat passenger, otherwise, get forward! I find the seating very comfortable here. I like the leather seats, they are soft. They wrap around thick around your body here, so it cradles you, and I think that would probably support the safety philosophy as well. Now, power passenger seat. Of course you can go forward and backward, right? Because we got to free up room for them in the back. And look, I still have plenty of leg room here. 
Plenty for me, and now they have plenty. Look at this. I can go up as well. I don't think you might have seen that coming. <laughs> Wait, quite up. I don't know why I'm so happy about that. It's fun. And again, the contours of the hood, they don't affect my visibility. It's not anything I notice. It's pleasant. It looks like soft waves crashing down on me. Lightning crashes. All right, so it doesn't go back all the way, but it goes back, we'll call it 75 to 80% of the way that it would need to go. One of the limitations I saw is with this here, this is a 40 ounce hydro flask. It's a little bit thicker than most bottles. Just be aware, I know I'm being selfish and greedy, but I cannot fit it in the drink holder here. But again, it is pretty thick compared to what you normally do, but I try to drink a lot of water. So if you have a thinner one, it would probably fit just fine. That's one thing I noticed. I've still got the passenger seat down because I wanna show you what it's like when it's down, but also I wanna show you the back seat from the front view. It's hard to get that angle if you're a reviewer. The other thing I can see is what kind of, don't pull it, don't do it. I did it. This is a firm armrest here. And then it's got cup holders as well. Again, I love the breaking up of colors. Oh yeah, it's a Bronco. I nearly forgot. What do you guys think of the interior? The brown, the black, the charcoal? Does it work? And by the way, power sunroof. Let's talk about the multimedia touchscreen here. It's raised up like a lot of systems are nowadays. And the theory is that you're looking here, so why look all the way down where they used to be? That's distracting. So put it up here. It's just something people will get used to eventually, I hope. I know a lot of people say, you just stuck an iPad up there. Well, it's a little bit more than that, but I get the reference. Now, if I wanna turn the audio on, I just do that. I wasn't listening to Howard Stern, I promise. But let's say I wanna turn it. I like the tune. The turn tune, I like that. Because you can control it, put it on, pop 2K, pop 2K. All right, so now we can switch between Apple CarPlay, we've got that right here, Android Auto. It's real easy to do when I have my phone plugged in. If I wanna do navigation or audio, we just do that. Real easy to use, phone, and then if I want to, Look at my basic information. It's August 4th, 9.05. And then if I want to switch it back, it's touch screen. It's real easy to use, okay? I enjoy the startup screen here, so I'm gonna turn that on. All right, so now we're gonna show you our intelligent four-wheel drive. This is gonna tell you when sending power to the front wheels, which you'll see most of the time. But today when I was driving on the dirt roads, it sent power to the back wheels as well. And I'll see if I can show you the gas mileage that I was getting. I alluded to the fact that I thought it was about, that's not it, that's my current. Yeah, this is my average since I've been driving, 25.5 that I've been getting. And it can tell you different pieces of information you might find important, including tire pressure. Steering wheel controls, very well laid out. Here's how you do your lane keep assist just like that, and that'll keep you centered in your lane. It's right there. We've got our cruise control, our radar detection, radar adjusted cruise control, and then we've got phone controls, voice command controls. Here's the horn, just like that. And we'll look around. Here's your lighting, that's automatic lights, automatic high beams. Your fog lights are right here, and then rear lift gate. You have to pull that twice for the hood. Bronco Sport. I got it muddy. What are you going to do? I got it muddy. I'm sorry. All right. So here's our radio tuning. This one right here is the auto start and stop, and I'm going to refer to this more in a 
video that I do about things I like and things I don't like. Here's how to turn it off if you don't want it. That shuts your engine off at traffic lights so that you can save fuel and then it goes back on when you start up again. All right, so here are Ray-Bans. I assume they come with every one. This one right here, I wish this was a little bit wider. It fits my phone just fine, but it's a little bit of a snug fit. It has a C and an A USB. It's also got a 12 volt circular port as well. And then it's got dual temperature controls. And look, just follow the picture. If I want air at my feet, I do that. If I want the rear or front defrosters, I can do that. It's loud, but boy, will it blast you out with air. It will cool you down fast. Heated steering wheel, heated front seats as well. Alrighty folks, so we're gonna look inside here. I've got the seats back because I wanna be able to show you it all. I have the console open, so I wanna show you that too. You've got more USB charging capabilities in here. Nice deep storage spot. Look, even a pen holder. And then here are our different driving modes. One thing I like about this is that the hold, the brake hold button stays on. That's the default, so that's nice. Electronic parking brake, and here are your GOAT modes. Goes on any type of terrain along with your shift. I can't do that because I'm outside of the car. Up top here, we've got sunroof controls. We've also got LED lighting here. I like that. And then this right here is not LED lighting but it is lighted and it has a slider so we can block out as much sun. I'm gonna block out the sun. If there's a button, I'll push it. Check out the hook while my DJ revolves it. Sunglass holder. The GOAT modes, five different settings, slippery, sand, normal, eco, and sport, and they allow you to either get better gas mileage, better acceleration, or better traction based on what you're gonna be doing and frankly, your preference, what you choose yourself. So here we go with the GOAT modes. Goes on any type of terrain. You just turn this and it'll activate the different modes. So let's see if we can switch it out here. We've got sand mode. Sand. Normal. Eco sport mode, and then slippery mode. You make the call. Here's the window sticker. It does not include pricing. Remember fuel mileage is 25 in the city, 28 on the highway combined of 26. Kodiak Brown with ebony roast leather trim. It's the Outer Banks package, the 1.5 liter EcoBoost with eight speed automatic transmission. Take a look at the exterior features. Come standard on this one, okay, standard. And we'll look at interior features. This vehicle retails from a factory MSRP of about 32,000, a little bit over that. And this one, well equipped, was about 35, 36. So let's take a look at functional and safety and warranties. Feel free to stop the video, I always say. It has four wheel disc brakes as well. Remote start system. You can operate that from your smartphone, it can even adjust your temperature from your smartphone. It's so new, the safety ratings are not listed here. This one has different packages and you can see the Outer Banks package as well. Power Moonroof, HD radio, Bang & Olufsen system. <laughs> Everyone, thanks so much for watching and thanks for watching my Cobra Kai shirt. Sweep the leg, Johnny. If you want to subscribe and be part of my car community, we're gonna talk about all different types of cars. We're gonna review it, but we're gonna do it fun. You'll see lots of pop culture references and I'll be doing poll questions, interactive type videos where I get your opinions and comments and thoughts because you have opinions on these vehicles just like I do. I wanna know what you guys think. So leave a comment and tell me what you think of Ford Bronco. Ford Bronco Sport. Or tell me in the comment section what vehicles or models you'd like me to review or compare against. We do 
videos on safety systems, how buttons and controls and dials work. I just did one yesterday on traction control, why you would turn it off and how you turn it off and what vehicles have it. That one might be interesting. We've done stories about people who drive really incredible cars because every car has a story here at Auto Jeff Reviews. The 1.5 million mile Toyota Tacoma, an Aston Martin drive, a Lexus drive. My mom is gonna be featured coming up in her Ford Edge. It's gonna be fun. I'm also on Instagram at Auto Jeff Reviews and you can see my website at autojeff.com. Thanks everyone so much, you guys are awesome. Bye.